This video will demonstrate how teachers can access the Google Jamboard to create an interactive whiteboard for use in their courses. To begin, go to students.dpcdsv.org, then navigate to your Google Drive. If you're not already logged in, you'll be prompted to enter your DP credentials. Navigate to the waffle and click on it. Find the Jamboard icon and click on it. So once you've created Jamboards, you'll see that you'll have a collection of your past work attached to this screen. We're going to go to the bottom right hand corner to the new Jam, the Add button, and click on it. Once it opens up, you have the opportunity to give it a unique name by clicking in the upper left hand corner. Once you've given it a new name, click OK. At the top, you'll see that you have choices for different backgrounds. You can click on Set Background and then view the different types of background. You're welcome to go with the default, which is a whiteboard. There's dotted lines, ruled paper, graph paper, and some different colors for contrast. So you're able to decide which background that you would like to go with. In the left-hand quadrant, you'll see a list of tools that you can use to interact with your Jamboard. The first is the pen tool. And when you click on it, you'll see you have some choice for different utensils. So you have a pen marker, highlighter, and brush. So for example, I can use the pen tool to print on my Jamboard. And then if I wanted to erase that, I can navigate down to the second tool, which is the eraser. And I can go through and erase that text that I hand wrote in. Some other options under the pen include the marker, and you can choose different colors. and so on, and you're able to erase those with the eraser if you wish to do so. The next tool down is the select tool. And once we have an item added to our Jamboard, we'll be able to move it around and we'll come back to that tool. Next is a sticky note. So you're able to create sticky notes with text on them. And you can change the color of your sticky note if you want to organize things by a color. So you'll see here, I typed group one and I'm going to save that. And you'll see now that I have an item there, I can choose the select tool and I can move it. I can resize it. And you'll notice there's some ellipsis points in the upper right hand corner. This would allow me to regain access to edit that text or to duplicate it. And then I could also edit it and change the color if I wanted to. Okay, so you can also change the orientation. So depending on what you're doing, that might be a good option for you. Next, you'll see add image. So you're able to upload from your computer do a Google image search, pull from your Google Drive or from your Google Photos. So for example, we'll go to Google image search and this will find images that are released for reuse. If I choose an image, I can bring it in by clicking select. And I'll also be able to change the orientation and change the size. So you'll notice that the upper left hand corner has the orientation and the size capabilities are in the lower right hand corner.
Next, we have the capability to create some shapes. So you'll see here what the variety of shapes are that we have. You can pull them in like so. And then if you want to get rid of them or delete them, you click on them and go to the delete option. And you'll also notice in those drop downs, duplicate. Next, you'll see the text box. So you can bring that in and create your own text inside the box. And once again, you're able to reposition that and to resize it as well. Next, you'll see we have a laser tool here. So this helps you to draw attention to anything on your Jamboard and you can point things out to your students using that. At the top, you'll see the next button. And when I click on that, it will create a new frame or a new whiteboard. So if I was going to have a number of groups working collaboratively here, I could use my sticky notes to designate spots or instructions for my students. So if I go to my second frame here, you can see I can just go down to a sticky note and give this a group two and choose a new color for it and so on. So you can use those, those sticky notes to organize your frames. And remember, you can move these elements around. Then I can navigate back to that first frame if I needed to. At this point in time, I'm the only one who has edit rights to this Jamboard. So one way I could use it without sharing it with students is just to share my screen during one of my video conferences and do some modeling of instructions with the board. But the real richness of this tool is using it as an interactive space for students. So next we're going to look at how to share this link so that your students can collaborate. So we're going to go up to the share and you'll see right now it says private to me. And I'm going to navigate down to where it says restricted and click on that. So you'll see right now it says viewer. So if I share this link, the students will just be able to see it, but not interact with it. So I'm going to go and change it to editor. So now this link when shared will allow my students to be able to collaborate and work on the Jamboard together. If you need to restrict that editing access once your activity is done for the day, you could always go back and put it to viewer if you want to change the status of your student's access. So for right now, I'm going to go back to editor and I would copy that link and I could share it directly in the chat pod of my virtual video session platform and also include it in my course space for whichever platform that you're using with your students. Before making students editors, be sure to talk about the norms and expectations and netiquette when working in a collaborative digital space. Some possible uses might be during a session, you can preview an activity in the beginning of a lesson, use a sticky note to have your students record some observations or noticings, they can make predictions and inferences. And you could also allow the students to post an image to represent something that they've learned and supplement the image with a sticky note to explain their understandings. It's also a great tool for an exit slip. Next, we're going to talk about some more actions that are available for your Jamboard. So we're going to navigate up to the ellipsis points and you'll see more actions, click on that. So if you needed to rename 
your Jamboard, you can click on Rename and click OK. Also, you can download this as a PDF. And I'd recommend that you might want to try that periodically. Just remember this Jamboard is a live document. So if you want to capture a certain point in time of your student's progress or work, you can curate that to a PDF that you can save to your virtual learning environment, whichever one you're using, or keep for your own records. In addition, you can also save a frame as an image. So maybe I took the time to create this frame and I would like to use it by importing it into some slides of my whiteboard in the future. I could go to Save Frame as Image. And then once that image is rendered, I can save it to my computer and then I can pull it in again in the future when I would like to. In addition, you can remove a Jamboard and you can make a copy. So perhaps you've created a template for some activities and you want to keep the same layout and adjust it for future, then make a copy just like you would with a Google Doc or Google Slides and that would allow you to keep this work that you've done and modify it to reuse or repurpose. Underneath make a copy is updates and there's some help in here for you so you can take a look at these notes if you want future reference for how the tools work you can check in help here so it's a nice addition to your workflow to have that information available right there. So these are the main functions of the Jamboard from a web browser. If you're going to be using a DP iPad, there's an additional video which goes over some additional functionalities that you'll have when you use the iPad. And you can find that in the same resource where you're finding this video.